So, you want to add Steam to your Unreal Engine multiplayer game? Not a problem. In the next few minutes, we will be covering the how and why of Steam multiplayer, testing in the editor, and testing via Steam. The first thing you'll want to do is go to the website shown on screen and linked in the description, and download the advanced sessions binaries. These essentially add additional nodes to blueprints that expose the C++ properties of the online subsystem. Why Epic haven't exposed this yet? I don't know, but thankfully this add-in does it for us. Next, you'll want to create your Unreal project, and you can create it using any settings you want, but what's important here is whether you choose C++ or Blueprint, and we need our project to be a C++ project for the plugin to work properly. Now, you can still make your entire game with Blueprints, but you need to make it a C++ project when you create it. Now, if you have an existing project that you would like to add Steam Multiplayer support to, we can convert the Blueprint project to a C++ project by going to the Tools tab and then clicking New C++ Class. We can leave all the settings here on default, just click on None, and then click Next and create it as is. We don't need to write any code. Next, we want to go back to the binaries we downloaded at the start and unzip them. And in there, there should be two folders called Advanced Steam Sessions and Advanced Sessions. We should copy both of these and then go to our game's project folder on Windows Explorer or whatever operating system you're using. And we need to create a new folder here called Plugins in the root of the project folder. In this folder, we'll post those two folders we copied before from the plugin. Now we need to update our default engine configuration for the project by going into the config folder and then opening the default engine.ini file. At the bottom of this file, we will need to paste some code to enable the online subsystem and set us to use Steam, as well as specify the dev ID that we'll be using for Steam. In this case, as I don't have my own Steam dev app ID, I will be using Steam's provided default of 480. Finally, we need to create a small text file with the exact name steam underscore app ID dot text. And in this file, we just need to write the steam app ID, which in our case is 480. Save the file and we can close. If we now restart the engine, and then when we start the game, click standalone game to open the game in a new window. We should now get a steam pop up in the bottom right to show that we're playing a game called Space War, which is Steam's default for the ID 480. If this pops up, this shows that everything's been installed properly and we can get on with the hosting and creation of sessions to invite other players for multiplayer. To begin creating and joining sessions, we're going to be creating a new blueprint, and in this case it will be a game instance as that persists for the entire lifetime of our game, and in particular an advanced friends game instance. Now this is an extra blueprint provided by the plugin that we installed earlier. I'm going to call mine BP Game Instance, and in here we'll begin creating our create session and join session logic. So I've gone ahead and implemented this by doing one custom event called create session, which simply calls the create advanced session node that comes from our advanced sessions plugin. And by connecting the player controller here and leaving everything else on defaults, all we have to do when this succeeds is open the level that we want the player to join when they create the session. One thing to note here is that in our options, we are specifying the word listen. If we don't have this, then other players won't be able to join our level, so make sure that is in there. Next to this, we're hooking into an event provided by the plugin called On Session Invite Accepted, so when the player accepts a Steam invite, and from there we're just calling Join Session and connecting the player controller. When the player accepts and Join Session is called, it should automatically move them to the level that the host is currently on. Now, as friend invites don't work unless you're testing on Steam, so you can't test in the editor, I've made a quick menu and implemented some controls with a create and join session button. So when you create a session, it simply casts a game instance to our specific game instance and calls the create session method we made before. And when you want to click uh, to find a session, in this case, it uses the find advanced sessions node and note that I've put the Mac results up from zero to 10. Uh, everything else is more or less default. And then I'm just getting the very first result. Now in a real game, you would probably get the results and display them back in a UI. But in this case, we're just going to get the first result, which comes back, which will be the one session that we are hosting. Finally, just make sure that you don't forget to go to your project settings and set the game instance to the game instance you created earlier. So in my case, this is the BP game instance. With that, everything is set up and we can now start testing in the editor. So if we go up to the play button dot dot dots and click on number of players two, and then we just start the game, doesn't have to be in standalone mode. We can create the session on our main window here and we can click to join the session from our other player. And it might take about five to 10 seconds to make the connection. So you might show a UI during this time. Uh, but once that succeeds, we should see both of our players in the same world standing next to each other. And there we are. 
Now that's great and all, but this is all running locally, and we would ideally like to test using Steam, both with our friends, or for those of us who maybe don't have another PC or any friends to test with, find a way to test by ourselves on one machine. So to do this, we'll need two instances of Steam and two instances of the game running, and we'll be doing this using an application called Sandboxy. So links in the description if you go to the download page and then click on the link for your platform. This is a Windows only tool as far as I know, so apologies for other platform users, you'll have to find something similar. So with Sandboxy installed, we can finally start running our program. And to do that, we just simply right click on run box and we have a list of applications we can run. Now by default, you won't see any of the applications that you probably want to run on here. So first things first is we're going to have to add our applications to this list to be executed. To do this from the same menu, we can click on sandbox options and then we have a tab called run menu. And if we click on run menu, we have the option to add programs from our Windows Explorer. So in this case, we all want to add the Steam EXE, which is usually in your program files. And you will also want to go to your project and you will want to have built your project. So when we build the project, we'll have a builds folder that will have a Windows folder or whatever platform you're trying to run. And within there, we'll have a executable for running our application. Now, we haven't built our game yet, so we need to go back to Unreal Engine quickly and make sure we create a Windows build of our game. Before building our game, I quickly want to go into the project settings and just confirm that our maps and modes are set up correctly. I previously created a menu level to show the UI before we move to our main level, so I'm just double checking that is set for when the game gets built. And finally, we go Windows and Package Project. Here, we will create a build folder, and if we just select that folder, then when our game is finished building, we should have a Windows folder in there and a .exe file for our game. Here I've skipped ahead a bit and I've finished building my game, so I'm selecting it from the Add Programs app within Sandboxy. And I'm giving it a name here, so I'll just call it Steam Multiplayer, but you can call it anything you like. So if we apply and OK that, now if we click Run, we can see Steam Multiplayer in our menu. First we'll be setting up Steam. Now you'll need a second Steam account to do this, and that's fairly easy to set up. You'll need a different email address, but you should be able to create one in, within a few minutes. And we'll sign into Steam on the other instance running in Steam. One downside to using Steam App ID 480, the test ID, is that you can only test with players who are in the same region as yourself. So if you're going to be playing with friends or you're going to be playing with yourself in this case, you need to make sure that in your Steam download settings, as shown on the screen, that you're both playing in the same region. Otherwise, you'll never find the other player's lobby to join. And with all of that set up, we can finally test our game. So I'm launching from Sandboxy and then from the builds folder as well. And you can see we have two instances of our game. On the left, I'm going to put the one with hashes. Um, so that, sorry, oh, yeah. on the left, I'm going to put the one with hashes, which is our sandboxy version. And on the right is my main PC Steam account. So we're going to create the session on the left. And if we now go over to our other window, uh, which doesn't open the mouse properly. So if I open the mouse here and then I click on join session, it might take about five to 10 seconds, but we should be able to join from our other Steam account into the same lobby. And that works perfectly. Now, if we also want to test inviting friends and not using the join session button, we can close our client who joined the other session and reopen it again. Uh, we don't currently have a way of leaving a session. We could add one, of course. Uh, and in this case, what we're going to do is open up Steam and we're going to right click on my Steam account and invite to the game. And we get a pop-up to say, oh, you've been invited to the Steam game. And if we click play game again, we should wait about five or 10 seconds. Ideally, we'd show a loading screen and our player can join the other player's lobby. Uh, it might take a few seconds to load in the map properly, but once we give it a little bit of time, it should all load as expected. As a quick final tip, when testing in the editor on certain levels, it can be annoying to have to make a session every time. So if you just want to test your network code, you can just set the game to play as client server, or sorry, play as listen server, and that will automatically load you both into the same level. Now, this of course isn't using Steam, but it's a good way to test that all your application is working as expected. So thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, please leave a comment below and I will see you all next time.